Hey, you food geniuses. Hello. Today, we're going to start the first of our diet episodes, where we scientifically evaluate the most common diets in America and the myths surrounding those diets. Because weight loss is the most common New Year's resolution. Happy New Year! But what if we could avoid weight gain? What if we had a short, intense program, say a 10-day program, to avoid weight gain during those times when people typically gain weight? It turns out, most weight gain occurs during holidays, be that Thanksgiving to Christmas, or holiday as in vacation. That cruise you're going to take to Alaska or the Mediterranean. Or maybe especially when you go home (laughs) and mom cooks you those favorite foods. Anytime you're outside your normal routine, like traveling for work, or maybe in a new relationship, or getting rid of an old one. Or when there's a crisis in the family and someone's not well. The average American gains about 7 to 10 pounds during those times. They only think they gained five pounds. Imagine a short intervention to help us not gain weight during those times. It turns out the Brits did this. They developed a system that worked. A short interventional program. And today, we're going to share that with you. My name is Dr. Terry Simpson, and this is my podcast, Culinary Medicine, Food Cons and Food Conversations, where we have conversations about food as medicine and discuss food cons, exposing myths, cons, and montebanks. Here's what you need for the intervention. A pocket notebook, one you keep on you these 10 days, or as I'll call it, your handy-dandy notebook. A little bit of research and a scale. Start by writing down your favorite holiday foods, like the food mom's likely to make when you go home, or the foods you're most likely to eat on a cruise or a date. And don't forget the liquid calories, like the Mai Tai, margarita, wine, or eggnog. Then calculate how much exercise it will take to burn those calories, Write them down in your handy-dandy notebook. And next to the item, write down how much exercise to burn that off. For example, the average person burns about 100 calories by walking 20 minutes, or about 2,000 steps. Take eggnog. If I drink one cup of eggnog, that's about 225 calories. To burn that, I need to walk about 2 miles or 4,000 steps. For me, That's a 40-minute walk at a brisk pace. But add a little rum or whiskey to the egg dog, and now I have 335 calories to burn. So I have to add another mile and a quarter to the walk, 6,300 steps. Going to drink another margarita at the pool? Plan on working out another 20 minutes for that walk. While a sugar cookie is only 112 calories, that's 20 minutes of brisk walking, It's pretty easy to walk by the cookie jar and have six of them in a day without giving it a second thought. But if you write it down in your handy-dandy notebook before you eat another one, you give it a second thought. If you see how much exercise you have to walk for those six cookies, that's a two-hour brisk walk or 20,000 steps, you might grab a celery stick instead. So get a handy-dandy notebook, write down all your favorite holiday food that you're going to encounter, and how many calories you're going to burn for that food, like how many steps or minutes to walk. But it doesn't have to be walking. Last year, I learned to scuba dive, and scuba diving uses a lot of calories, about 300 calories for a 30-minute dive at 30 feet. That's the same amount as if you're jogging. Want to take up yoga instead? They burn about the same amount as walking. What the study found is that when people start to see food as calories that need to be burned, they tend to make different choices. Consider mashed potatoes. If you like mashed potatoes made with whole milk, and and who doesn't, 
It's 174 calories a cup. Two miles, 4,000 steps. But add some gravy and you double that. Four miles, 8,000 steps. You might think twice about how many mashed potatoes you eat. Maybe half a cup instead of a full cup. Or maybe less gravy. If you make potatoes, maybe use 2% milk instead of whole milk. I mean, no one's going to use skim milk. Let's be realistic here. But you're going to keep track of those things in your journal, along with your daily weight. It's important to write the food in your journal before or as you eat it, as well as how many steps you take. That works better than getting a pamphlet about a healthy lifestyle. And you probably read five articles about how not to gain weight during the holidays. People who read those blog posts or magazine articles, they gain weight. But according to this study in the British Medical Journal, those who did this short-term intervention, they lost weight. The advantage of writing food down and weighing yourself and monitoring your activity, you tend to take control. You make better judgment as to what a food is worth, and you tend to be more active. Weight gain during a holiday season or while on a trip, be that for work or pleasure, or during a stressful event, like meeting a new person in your life or losing someone, gaining weight is not a desirable outcome. But by monitoring food, your weight, and the calories it takes to burn that food, for a short-term focus, you can keep from adding those pounds on. When people write down their food and calories, they tend to make better choices, and they tend to think about foods in terms of the work. But it doesn't have to be work. It shouldn't be work. Increased activity while on vacation can be a lot of fun. Taking the extra walk on the beach at sunset. Or that 100 calories you burn during sex. Or maybe take up a new sport. Like yoga or cycling or scuba. Which, by the way, new sports tend to relieve stress even better than food. Yep, sex relieves stress. So by being active and making better choices, you have less to lose later. And while nobody wants to think about weighing less during holiday or vacation, eventually you will think about it. And imagine if avoiding that one extra helping or choosing not to have that second scoop of ice cream leads to weight loss, then when the New Year's come, maybe you're thinking about that last vacation where you were active and lost weight and came back feeling better and less bloated. Wouldn't you want your New Year's resolution to be taking more vacations with activity, like sex, and not starting another diet to lose weight that you gained while on vacation? Thanks for listening to this episode of Culinary Medicine with me, Dr. Terry Simpson. While I'm a doctor, I'm not your doctor, and you should always seek the advice of a trusted, licensed medical provider with experience in your particular condition or concern before taking any action. By the way, if you're going to take up scuba diving, you'll need a doctor's note. Culinary Medicine is a part of the Your Doctor's Orders Network and is produced and distributed by my friend Evo Terra at Simpler Media. My executive producer is the talented and beautiful and ever-knowledgeable calorie-sparing producer girl from Producer Girl Productions. You can follow me on Twitter where I'm at, Dr. Terry Simpson. That's Dr. Terry Simpson. I'll be back next time where we'll have another conversation about food, and this time it'll be about another diet, and we will unveil a few food cons. Until next time, don't drink the water, drink the wine. And don't forget to you know, walk a couple miles later or, you know, whatever it is you do.